Gujarati style matabhat. This is a dish that my mom always prepared for us when we were growing up and it is the epitome of simple Gujarati cooking. It uses just a handful of spices. The entire dish is like 10 ingredients at the most, um, including things like salt and ghee. So it's really, really simple, easy to prepare. And if you think of like jira rice, if you love jira rice and the simplicity of that so that the kind of flavors of the aged rice really shine beautifully and that is exactly what this paneer rice does. Now the majority of the flavors in this rice come from the actual toasting of the rice itself and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, it's as simple as tossing some rice in key along with some spices, coating every single grain and just letting it kind of toast up beautifully until it goes slightly golden on the outside and then we cook the rice in minimal water through the absorption method and I'm going to show you my simple foolproof way of doing that and making sure that your rice is as fluffy as it comes and I promise you these grains of rice are going to be so long that they're going to wonder whether they are noodles or rice. Grab a full list of ingredients you need to make this recipe in the description box below. Take long grain basmati rice in a large bowl. Wash the rice in plenty of cold water. Gently swish it around being careful not to break the grains. Once the water turns cloudy, tip it away and repeat this rinsing process a further two times. This cleans the rice and also removes excess starch for the fluffiest grains. Fill the bowl with cold water once more. Add enough so that the water level reaches around 5 cm above the surface of the rice. Allow the rice to soak for 30 minutes. While the rice is soaking, prepare the peas, potatoes and paneer. To prepare the peas, top and tail them. Pull down to remove the long stringy membrane that runs down the length on both sides. Pop these little pods open and remove the peas inside. For this recipe, we'll be using both the peas and their pods. Take one half of a pod in your hands. Snap the top to break it. Pull down on the inside surface to remove the tough membrane that covers the inner surface. Sometimes it comes away easily, sometimes it doesn't, so be patient and put on your favourite music. This is a job I love to do with my mum over a cup of chai and a good old chat. Once all the peas are prepared in this way, move on to the potatoes. Peel and dice your potatoes in 2cm cubes. Place them in a bowl filled with plenty of cold water. Make sure that they're fully submerged. The water will prevent the potatoes from oxidising or turning brown. Next, cut the paneer into 2cm cubes as well. Now, if you're using shop-bought paneer, place it in a bowl and pour boiling hot water directly over the paneer until it's fully submerged. Soak it for around 10 minutes. This technique softens up shop-bought paneer beautifully, but if you're using homemade paneer, you can skip this step. If you like, you can also fry the paneer and potatoes. This will give them a little bit of colour on the outside, but be sure to dry them both thoroughly to remove any excess soaking water. As we all know, water and hot oil aren't the FFs. Melt ghee in a large non-stick pan. I prefer the crust a non-stick pan gives this dish. Once the ghee has melted, add cumin seeds, cassia bark or cinnamon, and lots of curry leaves. Saute this over a medium low heat for around two to three minutes to infuse the ghee with the delicate aromas of the spices. You could also use butter or oil in this recipe. If you want to go for a vegan version, then use oil and swap the paneer for firm tofu. Drain the soaked rice well and add it to the pan. Saute the rice over a medium high heat for around 3 to 4 minutes. 
It's important to fold the rice using a spatula or a wooden spoon to ensure the delicate, soaked grains don't break. Once the rice is coated in a slicker key and is very lightly toasted, add the potatoes and the paneer, the peas and their pods. Very gently stir to combine. Season with salt. Next, pour in some boiling water and give everything a final stir. Bring the rice to the boil. Cover the top of the pan with a piece of aluminium foil. It shouldn't be touching the rice, just resting on the top edge of the pan. Place a tight-fitting lid on top of the foil and press it down to seal the pot completely. Leave the pan over a moderate heat and set a timer for 5 minutes. Once 5 minutes is up, switch the heat off and leave the pan as it is for 20 minutes. No peeking! Don't uncover it even for a second! After your 20 minutes are up, remove the lid and carefully take the foil off too. Be careful as the escaping steam can burn. Now it's time to create that golden crispy bottom. Place the pot back on the heat. Leave it on the highest possible heat for three to four minutes. Don't stir it at any point. It will crackle, hiss, and the bottom of the rice will crisp up so wonderfully. The final step is to give the rice a toss and a fluff up. Use a spatula and a fork to do this. And check out that golden crispy bottom. So delicious, and in my opinion, the best part of this entire dish. You can check the potatoes are cooked by piercing them with a fork. They should be tender. My special crispy bottom matapath, fluffy basmati rice loaded with fresh peas, soft potatoes and paneer. Serve the rice immediately with gujarati kadi or in place of jira rice with your favourite curry or dal. Let me know if you'd like the recipe for my gujarati style kadi in the comments below. It's even great as is or with plain yoghurt. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload new recipe videos. Thanks for watching!